we've seen that the US labor market is almost always inefficient. In fact, it's generally inefficiently slack. Now, just a few episodes when um, the US labor market was inefficiently tight, uh, in particular during war and then during COVID. Um, so that means that if you, you're the US government, the Fed um, or Congress, uh, you know, in general, you want to, you know, you want to use stabilization policy to try to bring the labor market closer to uh, efficiency, uh, to bring the unemployment rate closer to uh, its efficient level, which, you know, policymakers uh, refer to as a full employment. Um, of course, we know full employment cannot be of oh, zero unemployment because that's infeasible physically to have zero unemployment. You constantly have flows, you constantly have people who become unemployed. So you couldn't have zero unemployment. Uh, that's not physically possible. Um, and, so, and so full employment, I think the best interpretation and the one that makes sense in our model is to think of full employment as having an unemployment rate that's efficient. So it's a level of unemployment that's desirable. It's not zero, but it's positive, but it reflects you know, how the labor market operates. And it's the best you can do is to have an efficient unemployment rate. So full employment. Uh, so we've seen that the labor market is generally inefficient. So the policymakers, they would want to bring unemployment closer to the efficient unemployment rate, or they want to bring the labor market closer to full employment. Um, so let me just uh, like that. So efficient unemployment rate. That's what uh, policymakers should use when they talk about full employment. Of course, in law, so law talks uh, about full employment. Policymakers talk about full employment, but they, you know it's never really defined. It's not something that exists in our model. Um, so if you want to have an actual formal concept to attach to full employment. Uh, if you want to be able to model full employment in your model, I think using the efficient unemployment rate is uh, the best thing to do. So anyway, um, in our model, a policymaker would want to bring the economy to the efficient unemployment rate. And it's in the US, it's generally not at that level. So now the question, of course, naturally is, well, what is the efficient unemployment rate? Uh, and it's important to know that so that we know like what is the number that policymakers should target when they design their policies. Um, so what we're going to do now is compute u star using the formula u star is square root uv uh, to know uh, the appropriate policy target. So to know what policymaker policymaker should target. So, to, so the formula is u star square, square root uv. So it means that the efficient unemployment rate is your geometric average of unemployment and vacancy. So let me show you kind of graphically how this average plays out. So this is an illustration of, of how you could compute u star using the post-pandemic data. This is an illustration with post-pandemic US data. So here, um, what you have is uh, the unemployment rate, vacancy rate as a share of the labor force. And then this is just showing you how Houston as a square root of UV is going to be. And so this is just to show you that this square root UV is an average of the unemployment rate and vacancy rate. And therefore, Houston will always be in between the unemployment rate and the vacancy rate. So sometimes you are like this, where the unemployment rate here is above the vacancy rate. So here we know that we are uh, too slack. So you can see the unemployment rate is above the vacancy rate. And because the efficient unemployment rate is the average of these two things, when the unemployment rate is above the vacancy rate, mechanically the unemployment rate is above the efficient unemployment rate, because if the unemployment rate is bigger than the vacancy rate, then the unemployment rate would be bigger than the average of itself and the vacancy rate. Um, so that's why saying u is bigger than u star is exactly the same as saying u is bigger than v. So here you were too slack until something like here, which is roughly, you know, May of 2021. Uh, and here you see u is equal to v, but u is equal to v is exactly the same as u is equal to u star. So these things are, are exactly the same. So here we have efficiency. 
And then after that, the unemployment rate becomes falls below the vacancy rate, but being below the vacancy rate is the same as being below U star because U star is the average. And so here the economy then became too tight. But you could easily compute U star then by taking the average. And so what you can see is that U star increased dramatically uh, uh, here at the onset of the pandemic. And that's because, do you remember that U star is determined by the location of the beverage curve? And that's because the beverage curve shifted way out at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and that led to a big increase in U star. Outward shift of beverage current. So this outward shift of the beverage curve was vast and it led to an increase in new stars that reached you know roughly six percent. And after that new stars kind of been moving around there and today is around five percent. Uh, so it's fallen a little bit. Um, so that's what it is. And then once you have so this is an illustration of how you would compute that. And then once you have this, uh, once you have Vista, it's very easy to compute an unemployment gap. So the unemployment gap by definition is U minus U star. So when the unemployment gap is positive, you have too much unemployment. When the unemployment gap is negative, you have too little unemployment. Um, and so it's very easy to then compute it. Basically, the unemployment gap is uh, is a distance between the unemployment rate and the efficient unemployment rate. And so you can see it here again with the same data from the pandemic. Two things that I flag on this graph is that you can see that just in the first few months of the pandemic, the unemployment gap was massively positive. So you can see here that um, the unemployment gap which uh, crossed eight percentage points at the onset of the pandemic. That is the largest unemployment gap observed in the US you know, in the post-war period. Then, of course, the unemployment rate fell, the unemployment gap fell, the unemployment gap was zero. Oops. Uh, in May 2021, and then the unemployment gap became negative because the economy was too tight. And you can see here, we have an unemployment gap uh, as of uh, the second quarter of 2022, which is minus 1.5 percentage point. So that means that the unemployment rate is minus 1.5 percentage point below the efficient unemployment rate. This actually is the lowest unemployment gap in the post-war period. So in this very short period between 2020 and 2022, in the US, we had both the highest and the lowest unemployment gap ever seen in the post-war period. So really the wildest fluctuation seen uh, in the post-war period, just in a short two-year window. Uh, so that's quite incredible. So the pandemic really shook the economy uh, in ways that we had never seen before. So both largest in positive and also largest in negative. Okay, so this is uh, how you do it. So now let me show you if, if you apply the same method to the entire sample, 1930 to 2022, uh, what you get for the uh, efficient unemployment rate. So this is used in the US 1930 to 2022. So this is what you get uh, using our formula. So uh, so this is this is what we have. Uh, this is U star as a uh, this is U star as a share of the labor force. Uh, so a couple of things to note. So First of all, you can see U star is always, a, you know, the average value of U star is, all, is around 4%. In fact, so U star is, in fact, the, you know, the average over the entire period, if you want it to be exact, is 4.2%, but close to 4%. 
So the efficient unemployment rate in the US is around 4%. So that's a good number to have in mind. Um, something else that we can see, so that's that's a first, uh, you know, that's a first takeaway. Something else that you can see that actually in general, this efficient unemployment rate, it doesn't move all that much. So you can see that it's, uh, you know, always contained between uh, essentially uh, Essentially, it's always between 3% and 5%, uh, roughly, uh, except a few outlier points. Uh, so it means that the efficient unemployment rate, it doesn't change all that much. And that's quite interesting because we know that the beverage curve moves around a lot, uh, quite a lot, uh, you know, between uh, from decade to decade. There, there have been big changes, and we saw that last semester when we in the course on unemployment. Uh, but what's interesting is that these changes in the location of the beverage curve, they, they have some impact on the efficient unemployment rate, but this impact is not huge. Uh, and I think, you know, you, if you think of the unemployment rate, the efficient unemployment rate as being 4% on average and always between 3 and 5%, you have kind of a good picture of what's going on. Uh, but you can see there is one period, and you can see that it moves very slowly over time, this efficient unemployment rate. So uh, and that's just because you know, the beverage curve, it's quite rare that it shifts. And so when the beverage curve is completely stable, the efficient unemployment rate should not move because the efficient unemployment rate in our basic model is determined by the location of the curve. If the curve doesn't move, you start to move. And of course, we're not always exactly on the curve. Sometimes the curve moves, you have some big shifts. So that, that's what leads to the uh, movement in U-star. So movement in U star driven by shifts by shift of a beverage curve. Uh, but so the one period that really stands out though is once again uh, the pandemic here. So you can see you had a massive increase in U-star at the onset of the pandemic. That was, uh, again, caused by uh, the large outward uh, shift of the beverage curve. And you, so the initial uh, U-star was quite high above 6%, and then it kind of normalized a little, a little bit. Uh, it, kind of half of the increase has since vanished. So uh, the U-star you know, started at 4% before the pandemic, moved above 6%, and now we're around 5%. Um, so half of that discrepancy has, has disappeared. Um, so what are the key takeaways uh, here? If we want to summarize, so average U-star, Roughly 4%. U-star uh, is very stable always between 3% and 5%. You know, when I say always, it's almost always, let's say, to 3% and 5%. Uh, large increase. Uh, after COVID-19. Due to uh, outward shift of the beverage curve. Nevertheless, because uh, U-Star is so stable, you know, it's an easy measure to have for policymakers. Policymakers can always compute U star as square root of UV at any point in time. But if they want a kind of a rule of thumb to use, you know, trying to target a 4% unemployment rate, that will give you some good results uh, in general. Uh, you know, uh, so that's kind of a, the like, simplest rule of thumb that you can use, target 4%. And then, of course, if you have access to an unemployment vacancy data, you can be more precise and compute your uh, U star at any point in time. Last tiny things I want to show you. So I'm talking about this large shift of the beverage curve. I actually have a graph that I can show you to illustrate how far the beverage curve uh, went out. So here, what I want to illustrate is um, shift of the US 
beverage curve um, after COVID-19. And this is, uh, this is going to be, uh, here we'll just use Joel's data. We'll use a full sample, 2020-22. Okay, so here's what we get. So this is a typical, uh, so let's see, this is a typical beverage diagram. It's called a beverage diagram because it plots uh, vacancy against unemployment. So this is our beverage diagram. Uh, this is for the US. So as I said, this is 2020-22. Each dot here uh, represents a quarter. Uh, no, actually this here, each dot actually represents a month. Uh, and so a couple of things. So you have vacancy rate and unemployment rate. Unemployment rate on the horizontal axis, vacancy rate on the vertical axis. The scales are uh, one to two. It's just because the unemployment rate tends to vary more than the vacancy rate. Uh, so you can, how do you represent efficiency here? So we know that the labor market is efficient when tightness is one or when the unemployment rate equals the vacancy rate. So uh, here, the efficient efficiency, uh, you can just draw an efficiency line which is a line uh, where u is equal to v, which I've plotted here. And so any time that you're below that efficiency line, it means that uh, the vacancy rate is less than the unemployment rate. So any dot that falls below here, if you're below, it means that your vacancy rate is less than your unemployment rate, so your inefficiency is slack. If you're above the line, it means that your vacancy rate is great. Uh, it means that your vacancy rate is um, strictly greater than your unemployment rate, so it means that your economy is inefficiently tight. Okay, uh, so it's very it's very easy. Uh, you can just see where you are, wh where your points fall. It falls on the line. You are efficient. Below it, you are too slack. Above it, you are too tight. And so you can see that um, just before the pandemic, there was a so when we were here just before the pandemic, there was a big cloud of points that where the economy was a uh, little bit too tight. Uh, you can see that, you can also see that uh, during, at the peak of the Great uh, Recession, the economy was way too slack. So you have like October 2009 years that I've highlighted, which is uh, when the unemployment rate peaked during the Great Recession. And then after the Great Recession, the economy recovered, you know, along a beverage curve. And then you can see that in the first few months of uh, COVID, so between February 2020, April 2020, there was a massive outward shift uh, of uh, the beverage curve. So you can see it here. The beverage curve shifted out like this. Um, so this is a huge shift outward of the beverage curve caused by COVID. Um, and so that massive increase in the, so the location of the beverage curve change, the beverage curve move way further out. That's what caused uh, the increase in new stars that we saw above. Uh, so that's what caused uh, this increase that we have here. And then after that initial shift, um, the economy slowly recovered from COVID uh, along a new beverage curve that's way further out. And then in May 2021 here, the beverage curve crossed the efficiency line U equal B. So the economy moved from too slack to too tight. It was roughly efficient in May 2021. Uh, and then March 2022, actually, which we have here is the last point. That's roughly when the labor market was a, a tightest in the US. Uh, after the pandemic, so the tightness reached two. Um, so that was kind of the, the peak of the recovery. And since then, the tightness has been slowly, uh, slowly cooling. Although we are still inefficiently tight, we're closer to the efficiency line. Uh, but here, so you can see on this little beverage diagram very clearly what is efficient when we are too tight, when we are too slack. And you can also see this big shift of the beverage curve due to COVID, which led to uh, a big increase in U-star. Um, 
And you can always, when you know, when you plot the beverage curve, you can always, in a beverage diagram, you can always, thanks to our rule of comparing you to V, you can very easily diagnose whether the economy is, uh, the economy is too tight or the economy is too slack. Um, and then you can easily compute the efficient unemployment rate by taking the geometric average of U and V. Uh, 